Hello and welcome to this install today. We're gonna to go ahead and walk through a Bazite Linux install on a Steam Deck. And we're gonna do everything from the Steam Deck, not assuming you have another computer or laptop or anything. So to start, we have my Steam Deck, which is a fresh install of Steam OS right now. So nothing different on it. To do the install, we recommend a keyboard. Uh, you'll need a USB drive, uh, something that can plug into the Steam Deck because we're gonna flash the drive from there and a docking station. I have a, a cheap one here. It was like 10 or 15 bucks on Amazon. Uh, you want to have multiple USB inputs for the keyboard and the USB drive. So I also have this dock. I have a mouse plugged in. It's not necessarily required, but I figured it'd be easier to use. Uh, so go ahead and switch over to the desktop mode of your Steam Deck. And this is just, a, again, a fresh install. <laughs> I've done nothing to the Steam Deck yet. Uh, I haven't done any BIOS changes, which I know some people do. And, and so we're gonna start by just loading up Firefox, which the first time you launch it actually requires an install. So let's jump right past the Firefox install, which happens automatically. And once Firefox launches, we're gonna go to bazite.gg. Okay, and load up the website. If it brings you to the GitHub page, that's great. Uh, we're gonna go to the releases here on the right side, and we just wanna download the latest ISO. We're working on a landing page for this, so it may not look like this in the future, but look for the download and find the latest ISO download that you can grab. Now we need a way to write this ISO to a USB drive. Head back over to the application installer and search for Media Writer or Fedora. If I can type, search for Media Writer, and that should bring up Fedora Media Writer. Go ahead and install that. And again, you could do these steps from another computer, from a laptop or something else. Because we already have the Steam Deck and it has this ability, we're just gonna do it here. So go ahead and launch that application, open up the menu and search for it. And then we want to select the ISO file we just downloaded. So go here, browse for it and select, automatically saves to downloads. And then we need a USB drive. So now we're gonna plug in our USB device. Because I have this docking station already plugged in, I'm gonna plug in the USB drive in the back of the docking station. And as soon as it plugs in and is detected, it will show up here, not only in the installer, but it's automatically selected for me as the destination to write the ISO. We're gonna go ahead and speed up this process here just a little bit, just to show you it's happening, but we don't need to wait for the entire writing and verification to happen. So go ahead and wait for it. It'll take maybe five to 10 minutes, depending on your USB drive and dock speed. And then once it's done writing the data and checking it, we'll go ahead and reboot the deck. You'll want to leave the USB drive in as you're shutting it down, but otherwise just go ahead and shut the whole thing down. After it shuts down, hold the volume down button and push power. Make sure you kind of hear it turning on and then you can release the volume down button and you'll get to a boot menu. This will go into like the bio settings here. Go over to the right here to the boot manager. Sorry, it's a little out of focus, but uh, hopefully you understand what the steps are. And then find your USB drive from the list. Mine here is this Kingston data one. The other options are to boot to the network or boot from local hard drive. And this is gonna bring us to a grub menu. This is the first place that it gets a little weird because it's not turned uh, for us. We don't really have a way to rotate that, but you'll pick which version of Bazite you want to install here. I prefer Bazite with GNOME. I like the GNOME desktop a little better, especially for a touch-friendly interface. So I go all the way down here to Bazite's uh, deck GNOME, which is the last option. Hit enter. enter, and then enter one more time past that menu and one more to boot into that installer. It's going to do a checksum as it's booting up just to verify that data was written properly. You can skip this uh, with pushing an enter key to go past it. I'm letting it run just because. And then past that, it's gonna continue loading and get you to the 
actual installation screen. This is, at least I'm using the online installer, which requires network access. There are offline installers if you don't have network access, which also tend to be a little bit more stable sometimes uh, just during the installation process. But either way, it, the installer is gonna look the same for you. One just requires a larger USB drive because it writes the, the files directly to disk instead of downloading the latest version while we do the install. So start here with your language. Just go ahead and select the language you're going to use. And then all of the icons here on this main screen, there's five of them that have little warnings next to them that need to be filled out. So we start first with keyboard and you can just click on it and then click done and the little icon goes away. So this is a pretty standard Fedora install. Next, we're going to select our installation media. Highly recommend you remove any micro USD cards if you don't want to install to the micro SD card. If you want micro SD, select that instead. I'm using internal disk. I'm going to click this reclaim space and then delete all. That's going to delete everything that was on the hard drive prior to this installation and let it just have Bazite Linux on it. So we're going to take reclaim space down here. And now that warning goes away. Root account if we want it disabled or enabled. I have always left this disabled. You still have root access with your deck user with sudo, but there's no actual root enabled account. So go ahead and pick a username for the Steam Deck. I'm just going to go with deck as the default uh, because it's short and easy to remember. I'm not going to require a password for this login. And then the last thing to do is select the time zone that I'm in. So Pacific time here. And then we're all set to go. So we cleared all those warnings and we just click the begin installation. Oh, and I will show you if you need network access, if you're not on a wired connection like I am with the dock, you have your wireless options here so you can select wireless and join your Wi-Fi network. I'm setting my host name here just to make that friendly as it installs. So now it's going to download the latest installer and install to that disk. And we're going to speed up past this part. Depending on your internet speed, that can take anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes. So you just kind of got to let it run. It does download the latest image, which is a couple gigs and writes it to the disk. Once it's done, you can go ahead and reboot your system. You will want to remove the USB drive, even though it's not the first boot option. Typically, it's still just nice to have it removed and make sure that you don't go back into the installer by accident. So now it's going to boot up for the first time. You're going to see that grub menu again. You can leave it as is. You don't need to push anything. It'll just automatically boot into Bazite Linux. And then it'll start to load. And the first time it's going to load, it's going to give you a first time, a first run installer, which allows you to set a bunch of different options, install some more applications. All of these things are just processed to get it installed for the first time. It's not going to boot up like this every time. But we'll also see things like Steam get updated on the first run. Uh, those sorts of things are all going to be downloaded because they're not redistributable by <laughs> Bazite Linux. So we have to do that after it's installed. You don't have to log in at this point, uh, but if you have the QR code and you want to install, you can. So now we get back to this Welcome to Bazite installation, and this is going to give us all those options of other apps we want to install and settings we may want to change on the deck. So this will download a signed version of Bazite. Uh, you can enable this or disable it. I actually had a problem the first time that I installed it, and it seemed to hang here for quite a while and it didn't make any progress. So after trying to get this to load, I rebooted the system and came back into the installer and the next time it worked. Uh, but this time I don't know why it failed on me. So like I said, I rebooted my system and after the reboot went through these steps again. And the second time it worked, I don't know why it failed the first time, but it shows me installation complete and the next buttons available. Here's all these other options you get on the first run. All things like Decky Loader, MU Deck, all sorts of different things if you want them or not. If you don't know what they are, you can leave them unchecked and you can rerun this later. There's no reason you have to decide right now 
all of the things and you'll never be able to install them again. So these are just some niceties. The defaults are usually fine for a first time run if you've never run Bazite before. And like I said, if you change your mind later, you absolutely can run this uh, or you can install all these applications through other, other systems in the OS. So we're gonna go ahead and click install for these mostly default things plus Decky Loader. This may prompt you to authenticate as your deck user. If you set a password, you'll need to go ahead and type that in. Without the password, you can just click authenticate. And these don't take nearly as long because it's just downloading some apps uh, from either Flat Hub or different locations. Here's some more applications that are, are less, not plugins, but utilities and things that you might want. You can click on the little arrow next to the, the option to select which exactly which things you want. If maybe you don't know what's in it, uh, maybe you don't want all of the web browsers, those sorts of things. Make sure you inspect each one to verify which things you actually want to install. Again, you can rerun all this stuff and install all these applications through other means. You don't have to do them here. Once that install is complete, click next. We don't need to worry about our GNOME theme right now and we don't need anything else here. So we can click done and we can reboot. And because we changed our settings to automatically boot into the Steam Deck mode or gaming mode, uh, after we reboot here, we'll see it come back up and go directly into gaming mode. The first time it boots in Deck mode, it also will update Steam. I don't know why it updates Steam so many times, uh, but that first time is going to take a little bit, depending, again, on your internet connection speed. And in my case, it did reboot the deck one more time. And then finally, we got to the Steam Deck login page. Once again, this is in the, in deck mode or in gaming mode, uh, not inside of desktop mode. So most of the buttons and everything else work as needed. Uh, you shouldn't really notice any difference if all you do is play games. Um, you're going to get some updated packages and faster updates in ba with Bazite, but you shouldn't see any sort of compatibility or changes in how the deck in gaming mode works. So that's the quick install. Hopefully that was helpful and you're able to get it running. If not, please leave a comment. Uh, jump over to the, the Bazite Discord and ask some questions there. Lots of helpful people uh, if you're having some problems. The real fun of Bazite comes in when you start using desktop mode a little more because gaming mode works just as you would expect. So if you're interested in how to use the deck as a as more of a desktop and some of the more advanced functionality of Bazite, uh, check out some of the other videos we have.